It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebuka Obuchi, and great to have you here as always. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of things today. Um, it's been a very interesting, uh, very eye-opening week for a lot of Nigerians with regards to so many things. A lot of drama in the House of Representatives with allegations of budget padding resurfacing. Um, we are also going to be looking at amnesty talks, which uh, Mr. President did confirm we're going on with the Niger Delta militants. But the Niger Delta militants, uh, for some reason, have said that uh, nothing was being discussed with them. Um, also, sports did come into the highlights a lot this week. Um, there was a lot of allegations uh, thrown around by members of the Nigerian uh, team going to Rio for the Olympics with regards to the fact that they were not uh, being given any funding pretty much and were even asked to transport themselves to Rio. In the same light, um, the Nigerian under-20 team, who are the defending champions of Africa, were also thrown out of the competition at home by Sudan. So it's been a very, very uh, dramatic week for Nigeria on basically almost all fronts. But as usual, we're going to be starting off the discussion with the week that was, and I have here with me, Aminu Babalola. Thanks for being here today. Thank you very much. Let's start off now with, with the economy. And um, I didn't mention that at the beginning, but it's probably the biggest news that came out this week. Uh, we did hear the word technical being used <laughs> once again. We did hear about a technical victory sometime last yes, year yes. against Boko Haram. Now yes. we're hearing about the tech, we're technically in recession. It looks like a favorite word of the federal government now. But the fact is that recession is upon us finally yes um, if I would say something this government there's something the, the, that is common about about the government you know there's there are lots of contradictions I think it was barely before uh, 48 hours when Emefili, the CBN go governor had a close session with the, the senators the member of the Senate and he said he was just trying to beautify the economy. Even you and I, we know <laughs> that, that the economy is in recession. The inflation rate is, is on the high side. I think we have, a, it's, it's, it's about 15.6% now. It's on the high side until um, Kemi Adioshan came up and told us the, the truth about it, technically. You know, that, that has only a technical defeat of Boko Haram, um, everything it has, it has been technical, technical, it's the usage of the, of the government, if I would say. It, it gets people very, very worried, you know, looking at where we're going from here, especially when the IMF also came up with a, with a report sort of um, rearranging. Or, <laughs> you know, they had said, okay, the United economy was going to grow at about 2%, but now we're hearing it's going to be neg in the negative by December by minus 1.8%, I think. So it's going to be our first decline in, I don't know how many years. Um, I think it's 1987 from what I'm hearing. 1987. And if I would say something, Lagarde, the woman, the IMF woman, when she came, she told us that the economy will grow by 2%. She gave some conditions. That needed to be met. That needed to be met. Happened. Now, can we, can we go through the conditions? Have they been met? Now we look at um, the, the export rate. We look at the import rate. Now, we were talking about the, 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 our crude, which is the major source of generating revenue in Nigeria. Now the crude is nowhere. So the inflation rate will continue to rise. The Naira will continue to fall. Why? Because the export rate is less. You know, when you are, you are trying to compare that of the export rate and the import rate, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, um, an economist, a business, an economist <laughs> but uh, looking at what we see, you know, there were conditions. And these, these conditions that could make the, the, the economy to grow, we've not seen them met. If they have been met, I think, the economy will grow. Yeah, it's 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 a very tough tough one, especially with, with regards to the fact that you mentioned oil there being an issue, and um, the Niger Delta, of course, has been in the news since President Buhari came into government, and um, we we are still hearing of explosions of, of pipelines and. Um, Another one also happened again during the week in Bayelsa. It's becoming commonplace now. And you start to wonder, one of the promises that Mr. President did make, one of the first things he actually did uh, when he came into office uh, was making sure that soldiers were supposed to take over manning the yes, pipelines. Yes. The, the previous administration gave it to these militants, in quotes, yeah. to man the, the, the pipelines. And we did hear none of this happening. Do you think it's time we go back to that? Are the soldiers not effective enough? Or are they not even there? What do you think is going wrong? Well, if I will correct uh, an impression, they said the militants, but they claim to be ex-militants. You know, when you put someone that has been into this business, this, this issue of militancy and all that, he has been there. When you involve them to checkmate this, one, most of these things happening, you know, they want to do it to impress the government. 
But now you 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 sent this is this is democracy and some things must be in place. Some things must be in place. You you there, there's, there's a way you don't fight a thing trying to cause more problems. You don't solve it, you don't give a solution by causing more problems. You know, the presence of the military there could make them. You know, they have agitations. I, there, was, there was a time before Twitter closed down their, their, their accounts. They were talking about them being marginalized, them being perceived as a minor in a country that they generate the most of the revenue. And if, when you look at these things, some of these things, you, you, you wonder. You go to Shell, you go to most of, most of these oil cores. The Niger uh, people, they are not there. Most of them are not there. They are not being employed in this, in this place. So they are agitating. Now, what the government ought to do is to bring them to a table, table of dialogue, before this agitation started. You know, now, we don't even know the number of militant groups we have. Some are bearing Avengers. I think about two came up again. So if you solve, this, if you solve the problem of Avengers, what about the remaining ones? And as of solving the, remaining, uh, the problems of the remaining ones, what else will be coming up? So I would suggest, you know, um, right now, when you suggest a thing to a government, to the government, I, I want to say a government that is proactive, that is responsive, that when you suggest, give a suggest, suggestion, they hacked, they call people to analyze the issue, and they give a solution to it. Are you, you, you talk, you're talking about being proactive there, and it's one of the accusations uh, this government has had. Do you, are you, so are you saying that they've been very slow, and you think that's been the problem? <laughs> if there is another word, they've been crawling. They be crawling, you know. Nigerians voted for change because they feel there's this um, um, fast um, track that the government could put in, in place. You know, is that, wasn't that a wrong perception, though? Uh, I mean, does does well, change happen see, anywhere in the world fast? <laughs> Maybe are we, too, are, we, are we expecting too much? No, we're expecting too much, if I, if I will say. And uh, there's this thing that it must totally collapse before things get changed. I don't like that particular audio. I don't like it. You know, things cannot be totally collapsed. We have nations that have gone through wars. Sudan that beat Nigeria. In, you just mentioned, <laughs> you know, they, 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 it's, it's a warring nation. People come in to govern them. See, Ghana was, 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 was a country that there was nothing to write home about. A person came and made this, uh, the Ghana of what it is today, to happen. You know, when, there, when things is a process, change is a process, when things are happening, when people can see things happen, you see them having hope in the government. But when nothing is happening, you know, people, people think, Nigerians are very patient. If I, if I was, if I, you're a Nigerian, I'm a Nigerian. We are very patient people. But what they want to see is, they want to see things happen. They want to see reforms, policies that we, that we help. If you go to the market, things are going high. And you can't tell us that you, you are changing things when things go bad. So the government mo must make us believe in them. They must make us, now everybody is talking about, if you try to talk, bring out the, some of the wrongs of the government, they look at you as a pessimist. But that's not true. The government must make us believe in the change that people actually voted. But the government continues to bring up the argument that, I mean, things were handed over to them by the last administration in not very pleasant terms. <laughs> uh, the economy was already in tatters by the time they got things handed over. Oil prices didn't help the situation. So they, they came in at a time when everything was pretty much zero, at, at zero, if not negative. So building back at a time like that is going to be harder. <laughs> doesn't that argument even hold any water for you? It doesn't. I heard that from Ingigi. Ingigi said that. I think that was yesterday when um, Kemi Adioshun was talking about the, the economy being in technical recession. Now, Ingigi came up and said Nigeria should have, uh, would have been in total collapse if Buhari had not taken up government. And this is, these are simple narratives. These are simple narratives. When Jonathan was there, elections are over. But we, 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 we will still keep on referring back there was corruption. As it's been perceived, there was corruption. But things were not as hard as it is now. Things are hard. I must say the truth. We hear different news and all that. And why that will not really hold water? To me, that's my personal opinion, is that you claimed that things were bad. You're trying to make them better. 
But now, those things you're trying to make better now are getting worse. You know, it's, it's like a doctor trying to heal a patient by killing the patient. You know what I mean? <laughs> still, still, still on, the, on that plane, uh, I, I didn't mention at the beginning about the, about the negotiations, and uh, Mr. President did confirm, at least the presidency confirmed, that there were negotiations going on with, with uh, the Niger Delta militants. I, think, I don't know if it's the Avengers in particular or if it's the entire Niger Delta uh, militant or agitation, let me use that word. Yes. And um, it's something that a lot of people have suggested in the past. They've also talked about the fact that he is still going to look into the amnesty program to make sure it continues and all of that. Um, is, is, this, is this too little? too late, especially as we're hearing that the, the militants, on the other hand, are saying nobody's negotiating with us, maybe someone is pulling a scam. Uh, is this going to work? Is this going to stop this? The negotiations have been too late. It's like, let me, let me, let me come in this way. You're going to Ibadan. And uh, you found yourself at Ijebode before you, don't, you know, realize that you ought to be on the road to Ibadan. You think you must start from somewhere. The best thing you will do is to stop, retrace yourself, retrace your path, your trajectory, and get back on track. You have missed the track already. You try to get back on track, and that's what the government ought to do. They've missed the track. I expect the government, you know, there are, there are statements that this government has made that has caused a lot of harm, a lot of inciting statements. You know, I remember when the president when well, the um, Amampo interview, when the president said 97, made mention of 97 and 5%. You know, another decision started from that place. You know, after winning an election, an election, I was expecting the president to call Nigerians together. But instead of calling Nigerians together, he was making statements to divide the nation also. These people are the, are the ones generating this revenue. Now, you make them but it's look, never too late to retrace steps. Like it's said, never it? too late. It's never too late. What you ought to do, what he ought to do now, is to collaborate with the ex-president. Call the state um, security meeting, where all the ex-presidents will be there. Seek their, you know, indulge them. Call Jonathan. That is that's that's Jonathan's zone. Call him. How can we solve this problem? You know. Um, Late Umaru uh, uh, Musa Yaradua. He was not from the Niger Delta, but immediately he came in. What did he do? He called him, Come, let us, let us. The amnesty program started. And this guy, the, the uh, blasting of pipelines and all that, the kidnapping, everything went down. Why? Because he was able to take some proactive steps. So I, I expect um, Buhari to also do the same. I was expecting something when uh, he was to, to visit Ogoni. You know, the, for the cleanup. For the cleanup. You know, the Avengers issued um, a threat. I was expecting the president, you know, to, to, to steal the show. But he ended up not. <laughs> he ended up not. <laughs> well, uh, it's, 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 it's a very interesting country and a lot of things keep happening. Yes. We're going to be looking forward to hopefully better things. Hopefully the negotiations actually hold and we get, do get results from there. Thank you very much, Andrew, for being here today. Thank you. Thank you very we'll much. We'll take a break now and be right back talking about the Olympics. Please stay with us.